I always feel like action scenes should have something clever about them in this moment of, oh, I'm, how is he going to get out of it? I call it the, oh, shit, oh, cool. Oh, shit, odd job is going to, you know, get me. Oh, cool, he fried him. <laughs> did like about 17,000 drawings to animate shoot 'em up. Mm -hmm. Well, I did that because nobody would believe, you know, I had people that go, how did that eight days a week teen romantic guy get to direct an action movie when it should have been, why is that action guy doing these teen movies? Right. I did all that work to prove myself. Right. I got to have this meeting and I put in my trailer mm -hmm. of all the, and people had never seen this, hand-drawn animation. And that's exactly the way I pictured it in the script. And they flipped out. And I saw in the meeting Don had written on his yellow pad to his partner, Rick Benatar. He slid it over to him. I'm like, what is Don saying, right? <laughs> and then afterwards, the meeting had gone very well. And then he showed me, and it, he said, it said on the pad, who knew? Meaning, who knew Michael was going to be so great in the room? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you, Don, you know? I'm awesome. You just haven't spent enough time with me if you sat with me. Sure. When you have a go movie, mm -hmm. you're a um, overnight success after 15 years. I had this small moment where I got to see what it was like to be like a player, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was only a small moment. I, at least I got to experience. You know, they're saying, hey, you know, will you give Russell Crowe a reading period? <laughs> give him a week. Everybody <laughs> was like coming at me. Working with the A-list talent was it was just great. I was very fortunate that Clive, Paul, and Monica, they loved the movie, they loved the project. Uh, Clive told everybody it was the best time he ever had on a movie. I always found in most action movies there was like one bit that they go, oh, that was reason to go see that movie. Right. And the rest of it was filler. It's like <laughs> a car chase, drive, 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 screeching tires, drive, 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 you know, or I always used to say in a gunfight, it's shoot, muzzle flash, and then duck back and someone else, muzzle flash. <laughs> and this that goes on for like 30, right. 40 seconds and nothing, right. they're all the same, right? And nothing significant. It's like the foreplay, but there's no, you know, finish. Uh, studio execs say, you know, Michael, you know, you'd be great for this movie, but all your movies have, even shoot 'em up have a slight indie feel, like you can feel your voice in it, but we don't want that. Yeah, take, we, that take that Michael we, Davis we thing want, out of we it. We want it to be just a movie. Normal. Normal. <laughs> and at the end of the day, sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you want just the normal hamburger, but sometimes you want like a mommy burger or whatever. There's right. something more. Right. It doesn't have to be Realistic. You, know, you look at these early Spielberg films. We always end up talking about Spielberg. Sure. The storytelling with the camera is so amazing and so unique. Yes. But in his career, he was criticized for having too much style. And he's even, I think, said, oh, I'm going to be a little bit more like my friend Sidney Pollack, mm -hmm. where it's going to be a performance and st story. Right. And they're not going to feel my presence as much. And maybe for some movies, that's a better choice. But I miss that identity. Now, yeah, he, his identity is still there, but there is just some stuff that you go, oh my God, that was such a beautiful, it's like a, that's the only guy in the world that would have staged it that way. Right, that would have made that strong. And it made me well, excited. Well, the style is not no. like, like 300 oh, no. where it's all style. So why did he get lambasted for being the right. stylist when it was just great filmmaking? Right. The director is a beneficiary of so many experts, the DP, the production design, the screenwriter, right? And he's sort of like the conductor. He's kind of overseeing it. But oftentimes I have this like, I guess, I have to earn it. My parents always, you have to work hard, you have to earn sure. it, you have to. And I felt like I couldn't just be the beneficiary. I actually had to do some of the labor and I had to validate myself. There's not a ton of style in uh, some of my movies, but the fact that I wrote it and it was good enough that someone would fund it, I earned the right to direct. Your action well, scenes have a lot of moving parts that very multi-layered. Well, multi and that makes it actually harder to direct because a lot of these things that, and I, I love Michael Bay movies, and they do have those moments, but they're also a big spectacle, right. which they're going to get all the experts to stage. I mean, you get your seven cameras, right. and it's going to be awesome. But I'm always like, I got to have Clive Owen, I got to see him unbuckle the seatbelt. Right. I got to see him blow out his windshield. I got to see him blow out the other guy's windshield. All of these little pieces aren't things that you can shoot in masters because you got to right. set up they're all, each blowing thing. They're all thing. individual setups. And right. so then instead of getting the whole scene, 
in one, like I ran seven cameras, right. you have to get 22, 25 individual shots, and each shot takes a long time to set right. up. At the beginning of the morning, you go, why did I ever want to be a film director? <laughs> nothing's going on, I'm waiting. I can't, no matter what I do, nothing's gonna go quicker, right? Right. Then you finally get off your first shot and you feel a little bit good. And then you, some, not every day, but sometimes you get into a really good rhythm and you're getting lots of stuff right. and you're getting to make your adjustments. You're getting, oh, I got an extra shot or, right. and we're a little bit ahead or whatever. Right. And then the day wears on and somehow after lunch you lose that momentum right. that people are slower, right? And then you realize, oh, it's gonna be tight again. Mm -hmm. And then it's that last hour and you know, my line producer would come and stand over my shoulder right. and then I'm feeling <laughs> nervous. And the days that I get basically what I want, I always feel like I won the Super Bowl. People aren't gonna agree with me, but when I was growing up, everybody was, oh my God, Dirty Harry, Dirty Harry. Did you see Dirty Harry, Dirty Harry? Right, sure. You know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, he stood there with the good line and he shot. Right. Well, what's cinematic about that? And right. How hard is that? But Bond in Goldfinger. Yeah. You have this great bit, he's fighting odd job. You've set him up as this right. big, difficult guy right. to fight. Right. You got the ticking clock, he's gotta stop the bomb going right. off, right? And uh, you set up early on Bond Falls and he sees this electric cable that you don't know is gonna mean anything, right? right. right? But it's kind of sparking. Right. And then odd job throws his hat and he misses it. Right. And the hat must have some like metal Metallic in it or thing. whatever. Right, right. right. And now Bond gets it. Oh, this must be the big idea that he's gonna kill the bad guy right. with his own weapon. Right. And Bond misses. Right. Odd job now can get the hat a second time. Odd job is not gonna miss a second time. Right. 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 And as odd job grabs the hat that has metal in it that's stuck between the metal bars, Bond dives for those cables right. you set up. He slides across the room, and I like characters that dive that are acrobatic. He slides across the room and touches the metal bars yeah. so that electricity goes across all the metal bars fries them. to fries right. Aja. Right, right. And it's clever and it's a surprise, but it's not so out of the blue that they didn't show you the pieces that you could have been, if you were Bond in the moment, oh, I'm gonna use this, this, this. I like to see the mental process of the hero how am I gonna get out of this? Mm -hmm. The clues are there, and then he does it. But it's not just static, like a bang, right? Right. He's actually flying. And it's a last minute thing. It's like, it's like, I call it the oh <laughs> oh cool. Oh <laughs> odd job is gonna, you know, get me. Oh cool, he fried him! <laughs> you have these screenwriting gurus that say you should write every day. You just gotta right. make it a habit, gotta write. And I found early on in my career that I always felt good when I was in the middle of writing a screenplay. Mm -hmm. And I've written so many screenplays that now I look, I should never have wasted my time. That I spent a lot more time thinking about what I should write, even though I actually enjoy the process of writing more than making a decision of what's worth my time writing. Mm -hmm. I describe Hollywood again, sort of like the gravitation around Earth, mm -hmm. that if it's so much fuel to get through that heavy gravity, but once you get into outer space, a little burst of ignition can send you off to Mars because mm -hmm. there's no resistance. Mm -hmm. If you get to the point where you break through all the gravity and you've had a, a couple of hits and you're bonafide and people, you're so wanted, it's a lot easier. You walk in and go, oh, I'm gonna direct this pilot this week, even though I'm prepping my movie that's in three months, mm -hmm. and oh, I'm gonna produce this movie for the, my friend, mm -hmm. and oh, I got my next movie lined up, and you can actually handle it all because it actually is less harder. You walk into a room and there's less battles because you're, people listen to you. You don't right. have to convince them with actual good ideas. The fact that you say that we're gonna do this, it must be a good idea, is rather than, and you do less <laughs> prep, and you only then turn it on when you need to. Right. If it were easy, maybe we wouldn't want to do it. Maybe that's why it's so much fun. I mean, there is this sort of brinksmanship, this, yeah. it's a chess match, it's creative, it's, it's everything, it's human nature. Yeah. And then when you finally see this movie that's a document of wow, and you know, hopefully you like it, that it's gonna live, you know, live forever. Right. Movies have a life beyond that, and you have to remember that that's really what you're doing it for. Right. Thanks so much. Thank Michael. you. Thank Very good. You. <laughs> Go! <laughs> hold them up there and get them, hold them up. Go! <laughs> it's working, Ray. Start bringing them down, start bringing them down, you got him. Don't cross the stream. Right. Maybe now you'll never slam a guy with a positron collider, huh? <laughs> Make me shorten your stream, I don't want my face burned off. All right, I'm opening the trap now. Don't look directly into the trap. <laughs> I looked at the trap, Ray. Bring your streams off as soon as I close the trap. Get ready. I'm closing it. Now!
Hey, Norwood, did you hear about Breaking Bad? Yeah, it's over. I'm bummed. Yeah, no, apparently Katzenberg is at MIPCOM in France right now talking to the creators of Breaking Bad about offering them $75 million to create three additional episodes. <laughs> That's insane. Well, first I'd like to say thank you so much, Alex, for joining us. Uh, I'm just going to come right out and say it. I thought you were going to be man. I didn't know that women could be scientists. Okay. That was nice talking to you. Oh, uh, please, please, please don't go. Uh, we don't have an episode without you. Maybe you want to see something more lighthearted, like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. Can't wait to just grab up some kids and go see this movie. I mean some friends with kids, not some kids. That's creepy. Just gotta find some friends. Oh, jokes. Whoa, you can act? Apparently you can, since now SNL will hire you, though only to stick pieces of your body into other things, mainly boxes, and mothers, and Lady Gaga. That's enough to land you the lead in several Redbox-ready movies in which you do an okay job.